Good day, everybody. This is Louie. Thank you for joining my channel. All glory to God, Jesus, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. One thing to get straight forward right here is that Jesus loves you, God loves you, and Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. He's not our way, our truth, and our life. He is the way, the truth, the life. He's the only way to get to God, and that's the narrow path, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me this evening. This is a very special video. This has nothing to do with me other than I might add a little experience to it to relate to this, this gentleman that I'm going to talk to about talk to you about um, his name is Arnold Alamila okay this is a, a co-worker of mine whom I've been talking with for the last couple of months trying to get him from Christ right now he's at that creation versus evolution part in his life he's a 20 year old man uh, he's got a girlfriend who he wants to make his wife and they've got a daughter and a son and um, this gentleman is going down the road that I just went down the, the same road and I'm I'm I see red flags, red lights, and he came up to me the other day and opened up about his personal life, about what he was going through. I'm not going to talk about too much about that in uh, this video, except to say that there is drugs and alcohol involved and uh, a bunch of other sins. And he's telling me the same things that he's doing that I went through that just ended my last relationship. And the goal of this channel is to save souls and to preach the gospel and to give all glory to God because Jesus is King, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So. Uh, today, I would love for everybody to sit here and pray for Mr. Arnold Alamila. And you need to write this down. Arnold, his last name is Alamila, A-L-A-M-I-L-L-A. He's an unbeliever, but right now he's at that evolution versus creation part. He's leaning more, he's leaning towards more the evolution part. He's got some issues that he's trying to get over that he doesn't quite understand, and I'm hoping that with our prayer today in this video that we could reach him so he could get over that hump of evolution and get into believing in Jesus Christ as his own personal savior, the only one who can save this man's soul. You know, and we all know this, right? As Christians, we know this. And our job as Christians is to go out there and preach the gospel. Whatever spiritual gift you got, we've got to use that. And if you're in the church and you got a spiritual gift, and if you're a Christian, you do have a spiritual gift. Some people have one, some people have two, some people have five. I don't know what mine is. Mine, mine might be the gift of gab. I don't know. I'm still trying to find mine, utilize them to the best. But we got to sit here as Christians and help those who are unsaved. You know, why did Jesus eat with the with the sick at, at that dinner? Because he said, "What use is it if I if I'm always chilling out with the with the healed? I can't save the healed. They're already healed. I'm going to hang out with the sick so I can save souls." And that we're, that's what we're trying to do here on this channel. So please, let's pray for Mister. Alamila, and let's let's just all get into deep prayer because he's going down that same road I just went down two months ago. And, you know, he came up to me and he opened up. And why did he come up to me? Well, I think it's because I've been talking to him for the last 60 or 90 days. And I come up to him. I, I, I nicknamed him the rock because he believes that we come from a rock, that it rained millions of years onto a rock. And, you know, I, I joke about him with that. He's never said I came from a rock. But I told him, well, if you believe in evolution, you believe that you came from a rock and it's, you know, a good big bang. But, you know, we laugh and joke about this and we have fun at this. Um, but I call him the rock. But uh, we got to break his mind free from this. And the only way that's going to happen is through deep prayer. Now, we, we can sit here and pray that he gets off the drugs and alcohol. But that's uh, trying to get rid of the circumstances. And, you know, God could take away my circumstances. He's like, you know what, Louis, I can see that you're in pain and you're having a hard time dealing with what you just went through. But if I take away your circumstances, it's not going to do anything. It's, not, it's going to take away the, the, the instant pain right now and what you're going through, but you need to change the mind because when you change the mind, you get rid of the habits, you get rid of the sin. Well, you're not going to get rid of all the sins, but the major sins and mistakes that we keep repeating over and over in life. I shared with you guys on this channel the things I was doing, the problem I had with always depending on women and never really getting to the serious roots of my problem, of the trauma that I was going through. I never dealt with them, but now I'm going to deal with them. Oh, Lord, thank you. Jesus, King, Kings, Lord, Lord, all glory to God. You know what I'm saying? But right now, he will not take away your consequences because they don't work. Your habits will still be there. So how do you deal with somebody in the mind and the heart? Right now, we got to get Jesus Christ into Mr. Arnold Alamila's heart. And, you know, he, he, he's got some questions. So I'm going to be linking him this video. He's going to be watching this video. So everybody, he's got some major concerns about being a, a Christian. Now, Mr. Uh, Alamila is uh, he's Mexican, so he grew up around most likely a, a Catholic 
setting, you know, and we all know about Catholics and what they've done to the church and what the, how they've dirtied up the name of Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? And um, he knows about good and evil. Today I asked him, I was like, do you know what good is? He's like, yeah. Do you know what evil is? He's like, yeah. I was like, do you believe in good and evil? He's like, yes. Do you believe in right and wrong? He's like, yes. I was like, do you believe in up and down, left and right? He's like, yes, yes, yes. So I'm like, okay, so where does good come from? He's like, Jesus. And I'm like, there you go. Where does bad come from? Where does evil come from? He said, Satan. I was like, okay, so to your own admission, you just told me you believe that good is Jesus and evil is Satan. He's like, yes. I'm like, but then you go down this evolution journey. I was like, you, you just admitted about Jesus and Satan. You just told me that you believe in Jesus and Satan, but yet you're having trouble believing uh, in God. I was like, so ladies and gentlemen, he knows about good and evil. He knows about right and wrong. I was like, right and wrong is written in our hearts. That's what the 10 commandments are coming from. I was like, you can't get science to tell you where your feelings come from. You can't get science to tell you where, uh, where you make your decisions, how you feel bad, your emotions. I was like, do you think your emotions came from a rock? That all the millions of years and all the minerals going into a pool of goo and then lightning hit it and we crawled out of it. Now we have uh, love in our hearts and all that stuff. I was like, no, God wrote that stuff into our hearts. It's the Ten Commandments. It's his statutes and it's written in our hearts. It says this in the Bible over and over again. So to his own admission, he knows about Jesus and he knows about Satan. And I said, well, where do you think those came from? And he stands there. I'm like, the Bible. It came from the Bible, the very same book you refuse to look into. So ladies and gentlemen, what I would love for you to do right now, okay? This isn't about me. This isn't about us. This isn't about this channel. This is about this gentleman here, Arnold Alamila, getting saved. If you could, could, in the comment section down below, help him with this one question. He knows about good and evil, okay? I've got four points here that I want to point out to you. The first one, he knows about good and evil. If you could just type something real quick, because he's going to be reading the comments later, and I want him to see the love that Christians have for him, and the love that Jesus has for him, and the love that God has for him. So okay, if you could write just a quick note about good versus evil, and how to win him over to Christ, okay? So the second point is, why does God punish? He can't get over this, and I get it. We've all had that, that thought in our head before. Why does God punish? Why doesn't he just take away Satan and sin? He could do it. He, he says it himself. He could just do it like this if he wants to. He's God, right? Can't he just do it? You know, and I told him, you know, all the story about Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. We're here to suffer in our sin, and Jesus is going to come back in the second coming. So this is another one. Why does God punish his children? You know, we went through this. It's like, well, to teach us a, list, a lesson. We've been cursed the moment Eve bit into the apple. We were cursed when Cain murdered his brother Abel. But he doesn't read the Bible, so he doesn't understand this. And I can't give him the Bible because he won't read it. He needs to know why does God punish his people? Why does God kill children? Why does God let women and children and men die? Why doesn't he just snap his fingers and um, just end it all? If he's the almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, why doesn't he just get rid of all the pain in the world, get rid of Satan, and put us all in a good spot where we could just live for eternity? So if you guys could write him a quick answer about this, because he will be reading about this. He's going to be reading the comments, okay? This one I had some trouble with, and I had to call my pastor and talk to him. We're talking tomorrow. I'm going to be talking to him more, Arnold, about that second one. And ladies and gentlemen, this is not a ministry channel. This is not a church channel. This, Well, it's a church in the sense that we're together in Christ and the body of church, but I'm not a ministry. I'm not a pastor. I'm just some dude who's sharing his experiences right now. I'm begging for everybody to please pray for this man because he's going down the same road that I went. I don't want him to lose his, his wife or his girlfriend. I don't want him to lose his child or his two children. I don't want him to suffer the stuff that we went through. We can prevent this if we could just get God into his heart, but we can't stop him from doing the things that are making him going to lose this. Okay? So first thing we got to answer to him is he knows about good and evil. If you guys could type something real quick. And the second thing is, why does God punish? Why doesn't he just snap his fingers and end it at all? So if you guys have, to say, if you guys have something to say about that, that would be really awesome. Please, he's going to be reading the comments. The second, uh, the third point is, I was like, well, we're here to worship God. And he went, see, that's the point. Worship, okay? Worship, that's such an occultish thing. That's such like a bad thing to be doing. He, does, he doesn't get the worshiping God part. He, he sees the word worship as a bad thing. I can't blame him considering the world we live in and how worshiping, like we hear it 
tied to many bad things like cult leaders, worship Satan, worship, you know, the ground I walk on. Oh, I'm almighty. No, because a lot of things that come from the Bible and our Christian light get dirtied up. This whole thing with worship, if you guys could talk to him about worship, that'd be awesome. And we need your help, guys, please. He says, worship seems occultish. It's not cool to be doing that. Why doesn't he just love me as a good person? Why do I have to worship God? I, I was like, well, because he created us. You know, I, I said this to him. I was like, imagine, and he's like, and God's a jealous God, right? I was like, yeah, he's like, why is he jealous? I was like, okay, worship and jealousy. Now, imagine, I was like, Arnold, you have a, you have a son and a daughter, right? He's like, yeah. I was like, wait till they get about 10 years old. Could you imagine what would it feel like if your children went to another man and called him dad, would, wouldn't that PO you off? Wouldn't that really make you jealous and mad? And he said, yeah. And I was like, there you go. You want them to worship you. You want them to call you dad, to look to you for respect, to look to you for guidance, to look for you for your allowance, your Nintendo, your food, the clothing on your back, the shelter. They don't care where that stuff comes from. They just want it from you. But imagine if your own two children, when they grow up and call another male a dad, another father a dad, or another man a dad, wouldn't that upset you that they weren't worshiping you or calling you father? And he tried to get back at me, but I saw it in his eye that he knew what I was talking about. So again, if you could talk to him about worship, you know, what that really entails, that'd be awesome. Because he's going to be reading his comments, so please. And... I just said this earlier, he was affected by Catholicism and how Jesus got a bad rap. I talked to him today about that. You know, I'm going to be talking to him more about that. But if you want to add another comment about how, you know, the whole world got affected by Catholicism and how Jesus got a bad rap through that. And I was telling him about the Native Americans, how when the uh, Europeans came over here to North America, that murdered all my people, all my Native American ancestors. I was like, listen, that was not the Christian Jesus. Yes, it was a Jesus. It was a Jesus, but it wasn't the Jesus. Just like how my drinking was a problem, but it wasn't the problem. The problem was my fear. The problem was my trauma. So I was telling him, once I dealt with the problem, a problem got rectified, just disappeared. As long as you deal with the problem, and I'm dealing with my problems right now. Uh, I'm not out of the clouds yet. I'm not free yet, but I'm becoming free. So if you could add something about Catholicism or Mormonism or Calvinism or whatever isms you got to help convince this guy that, yo, listen, Jesus is cool. I was telling them, my own people, my Native American brothers, a lot of them don't like Jesus because of what the Roman Catholics did. And they don't understand the difference between Catholics and Christians, uh, Mormons and Christians, Calvinists and Christians. So I, I told him about this and I saw, I saw it in his eye that he was understanding. So if you guys could help out with that subject, uh, that'd be cool. And there's one more thing. There's one more thing. He's trying to do it his way. He's like, hey, listen. I'm getting a gym membership, I'm eating better, I'm buying stuff for my kids, I'm spending time with my girl and my children, and I'm spending money at home. I was like, listen, these are all great traits to have as a father, as a husband, you know, these are great traits to have at the home, but you're doing it your way. You're gonna try and solve this problem your way, your agenda, your plans, when in fact, the only way you're gonna get through this to the root of the problem, because right now you're just cutting the grass, but the roots are still there. Eventually that grass is gonna come back, so the problems that he just went through last week and told me about personally, on his own, he came up to me in private and we were whispering because he didn't want anybody else to hear it, which is understandable. I'm not going to share that stuff with you. But I was like, you're going through what I went through. Please stop with these red flags. Please stop. He's doing it his way right now. And these are all great traits, what I, what I just said. You know, gym membership, eating well, sleeping well, uh, spending time with his family, spending money on his family. And these are good things. We want to be doing these things. But he's doing this to cure what he just went through with drugs and alcohol and some other things, which I'm not going to share with you, but drugs and alcohol is a main route for a lot of us uh, before we were born again. And as we were Christians, you know, uh, failing and over and over again, making mistakes. So if you guys could please just talk to him about God's agenda, it's God's agenda, God's plan, God's timing, God's way. It's not ours. It has nothing to do with this. So what we're going to do right now is just get into a quick prayer. I don't, I'm not really good at praying, uh, Overall, for people really good about praying for myself and asking, you know, God forgiveness for myself. I just, you know, I'm new to this thing. So let's get into a prayer real quick. And then if you could please pray on your end for Mr. Arnold Alamila. His last name is A-L-A-M-I-L-L-A. -L 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 -A. You got to write that down and pray for him fervently. Please just 
pray for him that something gets put in his heart where he just wakes up. He's going to be watching this video, so let's get into prayer. All right. Uh, Heavenly Father, we're praying for Arnold Alamila, and we just hope that something gets sparked in him to come to Jesus Christ, that he can see that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and that Jesus loves him, and God loves him, well, you love him, God, and that he wants, uh, that you want him to come home, that, you know, if you could just put in his heart to uh, understand that, um, you know, what he's doing is very wrong, and uh, he has a lot to lose. I'm new to praying for people, so I, this is like really one of my first prayers where I'm doing a public prayer for somebody, but uh, I am your child, and we're told to preach the gospel and to pray for those, and uh, he's unsaved, and we, we'd love for him to get to know Jesus. If he could even just open his heart a little bit to Jesus and forget the evolution aspect of it and remove that pride from his heart and, the, and whatever else is blocking him from coming to Jesus, that would be a great thing. And we're all sitting here as Christians praying for this gentleman. And um, we're doing what we're told. Uh, abide and obey you and uh, have fellowship with you. And we're, we're here as Christians to spread the gospel and save souls. So please do something for this man. Um, he's one of your lost children. He's a lost sheep. And we're doing our best to save him one soul at a time. And that's what this channel is about, God. All glory to you. All glory to God. Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. And thank you very much for taking this time to listen to us. And we say in prayer, in Jesus' name, amen. Listen. Great job. Great job. Okay, guys, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this. Pray really hard for this gentleman. He's going down the same road I just went down. I lost everything. Glory to God that I had the knowledge and the humbleness and everything, uh, you know, to get back on my feet quickly the way I did. I am so grateful that I did read the Bible for two years fervently and that I had a whole bunch of knowledge, that I had a whole bunch of illustration and that I had a whole bunch of experience of it, but I needed to change that over to get a little bit of wisdom, to get a little bit of rain in these clouds that I had and to apply the illustration. You know what I mean? I, I thank God that I was able to get back on my feet the way I did as quickly as I did. Like I said in my last video, I'm still suffering. I'm still sitting here with uh, trials and tribulations. They're not as hard as they used to be, I'm telling you, because God's got my back. He's got your back, as long as we have fellowship with him by walking in the light, not in the darkness. Because if you walk in the darkness to say you have fellowship with, with the Lord, you're a liar. And I was a liar, okay? So thank you very much for tuning in. I love you guys. Love yourself. Love your neighbor. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Arnold, got much love for you, brother. Please, you're going down that road I went down and I lost everything. I'm doing my best. I wish I had somebody there when I was going, you know, down the road. It wasn't just this one time, Arnold. I've gone down this road that I went down many other times. I lost, I've been in this situation that was just in five weeks ago. I wish I had somebody to pray over me, you know, and I'm your friend and hopefully I'll be your brother in Christ one day. And uh, I just want you to see that, you know, I care for you. And I hope the best for you and your family. Um, what else can I say? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. My name is Louis. Oh, if you want to pray for me too. My name is Louis. Louis Martian. <laughs> but thank you very much, guys. Uh, what else can I say? Nothing. Nothing else. Have yourself a glorious night, and I'll see you tomorrow at the Daily Devotionals. If you're not familiar with that, I run a new series on this channel called Daily Devotionals with Louie. And every morning, I shoot a video out to help your day get started. And don't forget, start your day. When you wake up, before your feet touch the ground, get deep into prayer with God. It could be a quick prayer. Just tell him, hey, listen, thank you for waking me. Thank you for that awesome sleep. Uh, bless my day. Give me the strength to get through it. And uh, it could be a quick prayer. Just acknowledge him and thank him for the things in the future they're about to get. Be grateful for the things you're about to get. You know what I mean? Because you're going to get some stuff that's great. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I'm telling you, there's no lies. It's amazing. I'm feeling it too. I get, I see the stuff happening in my life and I want the same for you. And this is how you're going to do it. Wake up, pray, go get your coffee, get back in your chair and start reading the Bible for at least 20, 30 minutes. And then go about your day and pray all day, every day. Give glory to God. Every time you get something in life, give thanks to God because he's the reason you got it. All right. I love you guys so very much. My name is Louis. Love yourself. Love your neighbor. And I love you. I was about to say Lone Eagle. <laughs> Have yourselves an awesome night. Thank you. All glory to God.